young people will do anything for you when they know that you genuinely care about them. And so for my classes, I would begin with prayer. I pray for them. I am not just interested in whether they're doing well in my class. I'm interested in knowing, do you, did you have lunch? How is your mother? Um, I, I recognize you weren't here last week. What's wrong? And so I think that is what makes the difference. I am Kisha Kalilia Denisior Dennis. Please don't forget the Denisior, that's who I am. I got married as Dennis, so I never throw away my Denisior. I am a wife of one husband, pastor, Dr. Roy Dennis, and the mother of three children, Rasheen, who is a third year student at Northern Caribbean University. Rahim and Rhea. Rahim is 15, Rhea is 13, and they both attend my alma mater, Glenmuir High School. Okay. I'm an educator. I am I'm a Christian. And I love young people. I think probably those are the most important things. Family is everything to me. And um, as I said, I absolutely love my job. You love young people. I so you've been working as an educator for how many years? Over 20 odd years. Um, I would have started while a student. I went, attended West Indies College. And while I was a student, I would tutor foreign students in English. And then I would also teach freshman seminar to first year students. So I would have started, that would have been like 1997, 1998. I would have started my teaching career. Then upon graduation in 2001, I uh, went into the formal education high school system because I did my first degree in English and history um, education. Interestingly, I've always wanted to be a teacher. My parents will tell you that I would be on the outside teaching the hibiscus tree and um, giving them a fine beating. And um, as I got older, like about eight, nine years old, during the summer holidays, I would set up my parents' spare room. We had a little back room that was just for junk. And I would set it up, chairs and desk, and the children, other children from the community, would come and I would give them the work that I would have gotten from the past school year. And so I've always um, wanted to be a teacher. Interestingly, I never went to um, West Indies College to start out as in education. I went to start out in communication. Yes, and at the end of my first year, I made a switch to education because I recognized at that time the communication program was not fully accredited. And so I switched to education. Most fulfilling change I made. <laughs> What's some of the highlights of your career? When you think about highlights, you think about all the different places I would have taught. My first job was at a Seventh-day Adventist institution in St. Mary. And at that time, it was a small school, um, and I was teaching English A, English B, Spanish, history, and I was the school's librarian. I think that, that that was a wonderful way to start out. It really showed me my depth and all the things that I was able to do. And it's one of the things that made me appreciate um, West Indies College, because even though my emphasis was English and history, because as a Seventh-day Adventist institution, they believe in this holistic education. I got a touch of Spanish, a touch of maths, a touch of science. And it was those touches that I was able to take into this um, teaching career and be able to be teaching all these different subjects from first to fourth form. Another major highlight for me would have been maybe Denby. I worked at Denby High School for a time. While there, I recognized that I did much better with the older students than I do with the littler ones. It was also at that point in time that I recognized 
that I had a love for, library and information science. I've always loved books, but um, just access to information and making it accessible to others. I, l I would have gotten that at Denby High School, hence the reason I moved on to do my master's in library and information science. And then um, Jose Marti Technical High School completely changed who I am as a teacher. Interestingly, when I left Denby, I was so sure that I needed to come out of the classroom. And I thought that I needed a job, a nice job working in AC, computer. And um, so I went to do my master's in something that was not education related. I uh, did a six week uh, internship program with uh, PBCJ doing digitizing of their information, all the old GIS documentaries and all of that. Um, and then I just recognized at the end of the six weeks, this job is not for me. I need people. I need, I need, I, I, I need to see persons coming. Nobody comes by your office. You're just stuck in this space um, behind computer um, fixing. No, I needed people. And so at the end of that six week program, my husband dropped off an application <laughs> at Jose Marti Technical High School. I did the interview and um, that's it. What year was that? That was in 2011. The administration there creates the environment for you to maximize your potential, who you are. And I just blossomed in that area. I would have started the school's magazine, started the school's Facebook page, the school's Instagram page. I recognized I just had a love for archiving information and um, saving memories. Uh, and that was encouraged. Um, additionally, uh, position of responsibility. I was given senior teacher just one year after being there. Um, teaching Cape Communication Studies, which is my baby. Uh, it was my first time teaching Communication Studies because previously I would teach Caribbean Studies uh, coming out of history. And so with Communication Studies, I just got a greater appreciation for my language. <laughs> For the language, because previously you would have never heard me speak in Creole, but through communication studies I would have learned, you know, just a time and a place for everything and being able to code switch. And there are some really strong teachers there and some of the things that you would have learned in terms of teaching and learning and classroom management, uh, peer coaching, you know, feeding off each other. And it possibly would have been where I started my whole um, devotional ministry which created this bond for me and the students. This started in 2015. I was on vacation leave and it was my way of connecting with the students while I was away. So in the mornings I would send out these devotional messages just encouragements all the best in your examination i'm praying for you today maybe a little nugget um a, 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 a scripture a scriptural message um and it's just started with the class and then a person started sharing it it was going to students it was going to teachers it was going to past students it was going to church members um yeah, today it's, it's <laughs> I have to have a, a whole phone just for, in terms of my devotional messages. And um, students will say years after, oh, miss, I lost your number. Could I get back your number? Because, you know, I'm now in China. I'm now in, I'm now in, 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 in Australia. I am, I am in the United States. I'm in South Korea. And um, I need to get the devotion. Additionally, children were sharing it with their parents um, and friends, and so the devotion, yeah, would be going to persons who I've never ever met. Till I now have expanded, I share on Instagram, I share it on Facebook, uh, it's shared via WhatsApp. Yeah. How many people are in your range now? <laughs> for the for the devotional. Um, 
Well, I know for my contact for that for the for the devotional broadcast, it goes out to over five hundred persons, and then um, I have pictures with some you know proverbs or popular sayings, um, and then there's my butterfly, which I took up about two years ago when I was diagnosed with an illness and I recognized the butterfly was the symbol for that illness. And there's the picture, my picture on it, right? Because I was sending this out, it was going all over. I was seeing my devotionals to play at places I didn't even share them, but nobody knew who was sharing these devotionals. Mm -hmm. Also, while at Ozemarty, you kind of became everybody's mother, based on testimonials from the students. Yes. What caused this close relationship with your students and people who weren't even in your class? What caused mm -hmm. that? The thing about working with young people is young people will do anything for you when they know that you genuinely care about them. And so for my classes, I would begin with prayer. I pray for them. I am not just interested in whether they're doing well in my class. I'm interested in knowing, do you, did you have lunch? How is your mother? Um, I, I recognize you weren't here last week. What's wrong? And so I think that is what makes the difference because I, I do that. Somebody is sick, I'm at the hospital. Someone has lost a loved one, I'm at the funeral. Um, I'm visiting their homes. And it's not just limited to Jose Marti. So you move on to tertiary education. I'm keeping up. How far along are you in your studies? Remember to share your picture with me when you graduate. When they're graduating, I am at the graduations. And so it's just that genuine care that it's not just about your passing the subject, but I'm interested in them being a good human being. So, mm -hmm. Teacher's Day just passed, mm -hmm. and um, you had mentioned that these days you get more Mother's Day presents rather than Teacher's Day. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, and yesterday would have been a typical case where you know I hardly heard a Happy Teacher's Day um, greeting. You would have one or two persons who would. Um, but interestingly, over the past years, I do recognize that um, yeah, they wait until Mother's Day and they tend to, to send more Mother's Day greetings than they do Teacher's Day um, greetings. And I get a whole lot of, rather than saying Mrs. Dennis, I hear Mommy. I, I, I yes, in just, in just writing me, hi Mommy, how are you? And it's so amazing because I was here on Tuesday a message came in, didn't know the number because it didn't name was it wasn't labeled with the person. And she, she said, um, Mrs. Dennis, this is, gave me her name, and she said, um, what's your favorite color? And I said, purple. Everyone knows purple is my favorite color. And she said, uh, I would like to have something delivered for you at Jose Marti on, 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 on Teacher's Day. And I said, you know, I'm sick and I'm out on sick leave, not at school, um, but you could still, if it's not anything that is perishable, you could. And she, I, said, I said, for me? And she said, yes. She said, I finally can afford to do something for you. And so I am going to send something um, for you. And so, um, yeah, those are the, the thing. So I'm looking forward even more <laughs> to Sunday because that's how they see me. And even in writing, even if they're writing to say Happy Teacher's Day, um, they're not saying Happy Teacher's Day, Mrs. Dennis. It is Happy Teacher's Day, Mommy, or Mommy D, or I hear Auntie D, because sometimes they think that, no man, Miss, our relationship has passed this Mrs. Dennis phase. We need to be able to say something else. And so... Um, those are the terminologies that they will utilize. Why do you think so many students gravitate towards you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I am baffled by it because um, they think I'm so strict. During my heydays, they'll tell you that I am the teacher, that they are running up the stairs to get to class before Mrs. Dennis gets there. Or... 
they are in the bus park saying, oh my God, we have to get on a bus now because we have Mrs. Dennis. Um, so yes, they fear me, but I think they also, there's also this respect. Again, it come, it, I think that it stems from the whole point of knowing that I genuinely care for them. Persons are appreciative that even after they have left my classroom, that I'm still checking up. I am still looking out for them. For a lot of them, you know, it is about my, when I, it gets a certain time in the year, I'm the one who is checking to say, where are you going come September? Which tertiary institution have you applied to? Um, persons will say, oh, I can't afford this. I, 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 yes, you can afford it, come. Others have done it before you. Apply, you're going to be able to, to do this. And so it's, that, it's just that encouragement and seeing who they can become even more than what they can see in themselves. Outside of Teacher's Day and Mother's Day, your birthday has become a celebration amongst your students. It is. Um, tell me about some of the stagings in previous years. <laughs> stagings. Um, I think probably the first one would have been 2016, that December. Um, I just had a very good relationship with that 20. 15, 2016, I would have been their grade 11 coordinator. I would have taught a number of them CSEC English. And then when they came to sixth form, I was their communication studies teacher. And I don't know, for whatever reason, that December, those children put down one big surprise birthday party for me at school. It wasn't so much of a surprise because another little grade 10 one had seen me during the day and said, Mrs. Dennis. Me say your six farmers, them a plan a piece of party upstairs for you, you see? <laughs> me can't get piece of the cake. <laughs> but when I entered the, the, the classroom, it was, I was pleasantly surprised. They, I, don't, I don't know where they got the money from, but there were gifts and food and the place was nicely decorated and everybody just remained and their tributes what was just really overwhelming. It was, it was something else to see. Another good one would have been 2017. 2017 was a rough year for me. My sister died, um, my younger sister. She was 26 years old, was in an accident and she, she died. And um, that December, Many of those students would have been in their first year at university. They all came together, spoke with each other. My birthday was on a Sabbath. I was in church the Sabbath when the usher came and said to me, Sister Dennis, I think you need to come around the front to see this. And when I went, there were over 30 odd students who had shown up at church that Sabbath to worship with me. My only worry was, Lord, how am I going to feed them pick me here? But they had made contact with my husband and he had made the necessary arrangements for lunch for them. So that was a really, that was a really good one. That was a really good one. So it's a big thing, you know. Um, I would imagine that sometimes, you know, my immediate family feels left out because I remember, especially for that 2016 birthday party that I was very much at school, staying back that Friday evening with them until late. My poor family was here having a cake and sitting down and waiting on me. So they would have made quite a bit of sacrifice um, to facilitate how the students sometimes take me over. When you look back, at your career and you see the level of devotion that these complete strangers have for you, how, how do you feel? It's overwhelming because I'm still wondering, I don't see what I, because I'm thinking everybody does that or oh, well, their teachers do that. <laughs> so it's, you wonder what, what did I do to, you know, make you do that. Um, I'm still trying because I don't see a big deal in what I do every day and it's what I do with every set year after year after year. Um, but it's heartwarming. 
it's overwhelming. Um, and I'm just happy that I can be that for them. Because a lot of them come from situations where, you know, nobody tells them that you can get out of this situation. A lot of them think that, you know, they are destined just to probably be working at a substandard job. But then you see this really bright-eyed child in front of you and you say, oh my God, your writing is amazing. Oh my Lord, you speak so very well. Um, you could be this or you could do, do that. Um, and all they need is just that consistent encouragement, consistent encouragement, um, somebody praying for them. And I still do that. Um, I know their exams are starting and so I am I'm calling and, and I'm praying with them. Just this morning I had a young lady, she was going to be doing an interview and I, yesterday when she wrote me and she said, I have the interview tomorrow at 11, I said, Art, I'll call you about 10. And I called at 10 to pray with her. Um, before she went into the, the, the interview. So I guess it's just trying to be that, that, that Jesus, that Christian person. Because for many of them, they are not Christians. They're wicked and bad like what? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's really just trying to show them that despite the harshness in this world, that somebody can love you unconditionally and just want what is best for you as an individual. You are a dedicated teacher, I a am. dedicated educator, and for so many, a mother. A lot of people wonder why women and teachers overall continue to be that when we know they're not paid for what they're doing. What is your advice for people who have just as much gusto as you but don't know if they should continue in this thankless field. Teaching is a hard job. And you, I think you have to be intrinsically motivated. And if you're going into this looking for a reward or an award, then you're gonna constantly come up feeling short because you're really never ever going to get what you truly deserve. Um, and so I have, to, I say to persons, go into teaching because you really love the children and you love what you are doing. Um, when all hell breaking loose, I am beaming, especially if I know that I am going to see my children. <laughs> because I, I really do enjoy um, teaching. The past two years have been, two, three years have been a little difficult for me. Um, in 2020, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune illness and it affects my joints and my bones. Um, and so it's not something that can be cured. It's degenerative. I find that, you know, just, pain, lots of pains, um, lots of, I'm unable to wear heels, um, I'm unable to take the stairs like I'm accustomed to, um, I'm unable to just stand up in classes and teach as I am used to. And so for the past three years I've really not been in the classroom um, because I've been in administrative positions, <laughs> um, either serving as principal, acting as principal or vice principal. Um, but I've really, I really miss that interaction with the students. And it, it has been really hard on my emotional health because you grieve who you were because I am not the teacher that I used to be. And it takes a toll on your family because for my husband who has to be taking me to a lot of my appointments, when I get my injections, my children here see me being immobile or unable to help myself. And um, it has really, it, 
it really causes you to second guess your purpose in life, second guess your impact, where you're going, what you're doing. And I've been, especially last year, it was a lot of reflection for me. Um, where am I going? Because if you're, not a, if you're not teaching in the classroom, are you really a teacher? <laughs> um, where am I going? What am I doing? What is going to become of me? This is where your whole, you know, intrinsic motivation and just love for what you do. Um, I have redirected my focus. I'm a lot now into the teachers and mentoring the teachers, the new teachers, the young teachers, helping them to be the best version of themselves in the classroom. And it got so bad that um, I was so saddened about not being in the classroom that, you know, this year when a teacher suddenly resigned and we were unable to find a communication studies teacher, um, despite my doctors saying no, I decided to go and teach the class. Um, happiest days of my life, but my body would have um, suffered and after maybe about six weeks or there about, my doctor said, you just cannot do this no matter what. This is bad for your health. Um, and so it's something that I really now have to, you know, seriously consider that, yeah. You won't be in the classroom anymore. Correct. I can't, I can't do the classroom as I, as I am accustomed to. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's, it's vivid, um, a, a student came to visit me recently and he was there and then he said, Mrs. Dennis, you don't look like the Mrs. Dennis that um, we are accustomed to. Because, I mean, students will know that, you know, you're, you're, Mrs. Dennis coming and everybody running and I am running too because you dare not come into the classroom after me. No, I can't even walk fast, <laughs> much more to be running. So that's, that's, it's one of the challenges. But um, I would imagine for me, what I look at is at the end of the day, my children, my students, they will learn the whole matter of resilience in life and how to deal with, you know, curveballs that are thrown in your way based on how I am dealing with this whole situation and truly there are days that i am overwhelmed but then you just get a text out of nowhere from a child a past student telling you something how much you did some reminding you of something you did and how much that made a difference and because words of affirmation is my love language then that's going to it's going to buoy me on a little you are not in the classroom right now. Tell us what fills your days and what keeps you going. I like to say that my illness is schizophrenic. In that one moment you'll wake up and you're quite okay and then by end of day you are burning up with fever, um, very weak and in pain. So it's difficult to plan from one day to the next. Um, what fills my days? I'm very supportive in ministry with my husband. Um, he is the family life director for the Jamaica Union Conference. And so he goes around and do a lot of presentations, seminars. I tell him that he's the most posted pastor I know. And so I have now become more of a silent supporter. So in previous years, I would have been by his side on stage doing presentations. Um, now my support is just, you know, probably for the long journey. Uh, passenger princess and uh, <laughs> when I get there to sit in the audience and smile <laughs> um, so I'm very very supportive of his ministry um, when he travels his job requires him to travel overseas a lot I'm here as the you know the support for the children um, making sure that homework is done and meals are cooked and I am here um, as I said as it relates to work much of my emphasis is now in 
teachers, um, student leadership, you know, that has always been my baby, uh, my prefix, um, training them to be leaders and doing workshops with them and helping them to maximize that aspect, that social aspect of their lives, knowing the ability, how to build their self-esteem and how to make presentations and um, mm, student leadership day, preparing them for student leadership day where we switch roles and the students serve as administrators and teachers. Um, so a lot of has to do with mentorship for me now. Daily, I'm, I'm checking up on somebody. I remember everyone's birthday and I'm always sending them birthday wishes. I remember all their special days that happens in their life. I keep up with what is going on with them on Instagram and they're not on Facebook. Facebook is for old people, they say. But I keep up with what is going on with them and um, I'm consistently uh, monitoring and encouraging in that, in that aspect. For the devotional messages, it's twofold. I would have started maybe about same about two years ago. My brother um, has a radio program in England, and he, I was sharing devotionals with him, and he said, oh, "Kisha, these are really good. Um, can you, you know, Sunday mornings share these devotionals?" So every Sunday morning, I am on um, sharing. Um, two or three of the devotional readings um, online with his listeners from all over the world. I host for my church, online church program, when I can. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to find other ways that are not as strenuous as the whole teaching and learning. And I've taken back up journaling and reading um, a lot again um, and writing. Yeah.